podcast so Sheena and uh Sheena and I are welcoming um Nimue and Thomas Brown with us today which is really exciting so hi everyone hi. Hello. Hello. they've just flown in on the um hopeless main air, 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 aerospace <laughs> nought in the great oceanic gnee dirigible dirigible <laughs> dirigibles yeah sounds perfect <gasps> Sounds perfect. So um, we we normally start um, with just a little catch up of what we've been doing. And so it's basically in the broom cupboard, sort of the ins and outs of what everybody's been doing in the last couple of weeks. So Sheena, have you got any writing news? I know that um, on our last podcast, we were talking about spinning plates and and how um, how tricky it is to get the writing done when we're coping with everything else that's going on in our lives. So um, I, I would understand if you haven't um, had much opportunity to do that in the last few weeks. Now, that's what I thought. OK, <laughs> can we leave it at that? <laughs> I've written the odd song. I have written a couple of really good songs over the last month. So I'm pleased about that. We had a rehearsal with the band last weekend and I was able to bring those songs to the table. So songwriting for me has been a really good release. Um, but as for any volume of writing, as the books require, it's been zilch. So I'm trying to do a little bit of marketing, a little bit of online work. But at the moment, I, I don't even want to be online, you know. But I'm very happy to be here today. <laughs> but I don't know about everybody else, but sometimes, and we've spoken about this, haven't we, Wendy? Sometimes we just can't do the online thing. It's just like, no, I just need to be by myself or outside with nature, and that's it. <laughs> um, because otherwise, the creative cogs, the wheels just stop turning, you know. Uh, so it'd be interesting to hear your. Your thoughts on that, you two, because I don't know how you feel about that. Um, Nimue, have you got any any opinions? I've struggled with bigger projects for, I don't know, a couple of years now, partly that whole um, doing the things that, that pay the bills and, and not having the headspace. I've been trying more in the last few months to work out how to get a, a sort of a better headspace to create from. So a lot of what I'm doing is shorter. I've been writing more. More poetry in the last year or so and short stories and blogs and things that are sort of not too inherently intimidating and at the moment I'm bogged down with the problem of having to kill 100 people but that in itself is a long story. Wendy can you just tell us what you've been doing and then we can really focus in on Tom and Nimway can't we? Yeah, sure, sure. So, um, so for me, um, it's just been a crazy summer, which is what we talked about. Um, I've been writing short stories um, over the summer, and I've had a couple of those published, which is really nice. Um, but I'm pleased to say I'm back to novel writing. Yay! Oh, well done. Uh, so, um, at the end of last week, I managed to 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 write sort of five thousand words. I've done another few thousand um, this week. Although I have to say, I did do some yesterday. And then when I opened my diary, I found the list of all the things I was supposed to have done yesterday, as opposed to, <laughs> as opposed to writing. But I decided that that didn't matter. Um, so I've been really plugging away. I've been, I've been plugging away this morning, trying to catch up on, on, on all the stuff I should have done yesterday. So that's a bit how my life goes, to be honest. I just kind of veer from from one lot of spinning plates to another lot of spinning plates so but I am pleased to say I am back writing my 10th novel um it took me a little bit to really get into it and um one of the things I wanted to mention was that I use nature to help me do that so every time I'd start to write something and then it would start I'd start to kind of lose the threads I'd set myself outside get out there chop some wood um go and walk I actually 
until the weather has been this bad, I've actually still been able to walk in my river because it hasn't been very tall. So, and I find actually walking in the river with my wellies on is a really good, inspiring way to be. So I've been doing a lot of that. So, yeah, so I've been using nature and stuff to get back into writing, which I'm really excited about. So, yeah, so novel number 10, hopefully by the end of November, it will be done. It won't be edited, but it will be written. And then I'd love to write the final book of the Lizzie Martin series before the end of the year because it should be easier because it should just follow on and I should be able to keep scribbling. But who knows? Who knows what crisis will be form before <laughs> us? And uh, and I'll have to react to that one as well. But yeah, so that's what I've been up to. But yeah, absolutely. Back back to Nimue and Tom, Sheena. <gasps> Yeah, to, you too. Kate, for the sake of our viewers, listeners, and um, which audience, can you describe what you do? Introduce your work. Um, imagine that, because there may be some people that are listening or viewing that, that have no idea who you are. You could what? be the dozen. <laughs> <It seems. laughs> <laughs> for all we know. <laughs> Honestly, but. So did you want me to do that? Yes, you, you can do that. Oh, you want me to do that? I don't really want to do that, but I will. Um, right. Uh, so our work together, mostly, um, to this point, is involved with Hopeless Maine, which uh, is a graphic novel project. It started out as a graphic novel project, um, set on an island that is cut off from the rest of the world and lost in time and um, very haunted. And is there something going on behind my head that I'm not aware of at all? I don't. What uh, is that? Yes. <laughs> and, oh, is it a character from Hope's Mind? Tentacles. Um, yeah. So <laughs> anyway, so it's it's part of, it's part of how we got together. It's been part of our relationship from the beginning. Um, so it's very personal. And then we opened it up. So now there's a lot of creators um, coming and playing on the island. Uh, so there's a hopeless main RPG, there's hopeless main music, there's hopeless main illustrated fiction, there's no hopeless main lunchboxes as of yet that I'm aware of. Uh, <laughs> what have I forgotten? People make creatures and things. Creatures, like, there's hopeless main. Because, you know, we're, we're like, we thought everyone, oh, I was going to be interested in Salamandra and the main characters and everything because she's, she's an experimental occultist and she's very cool. And but no, people want more of the spoonwalkers and the dust cats. That's what that's Ooh. a spoonwalker there. Oh, awesome! Wow, yeah, this is a cup full of tentacles that somebody put together for us. Yes, so wow. I, mean, I mean, people are into the story, but they're very, very, very into the, the flora and fauna of the island. Um, some people identify as team spoonwalker, some people identify as team dust cat. I'm really, really, really worried about the people that self-identify as Team Night Potato. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so when we work together, that's mm. that's pretty much what we're doing. Can can you clarify? Is Hopeless Mind? Is it a comic? Is it a book? What is it? Yes, yes, yes. It, it's a comic. <laughs> it started out as a comic. Actually, it was a web comic before it was anything yep. else. Um, but there are um, there are prose books, and we've just done two of those with the Kickstarter, um, and probably more of that in the offing. Yeah. Um, there's a blog, and all kinds of people come and play with the the, the setting and write things for the the um, the blog. So that's that's got a whole other life of its own. Now. Um, and what of that becomes sort of proper hopeless name? It's yes. always an interesting. Yeah, if if everyone falls in love with it, it just sort of falls into being canon. So, so it's a it's a comic which has turned into books. Yeah. And am I right in saying that you've got a, a tarot deck as well? That's in process. Or is it in yeah. design at the moment? Yeah, right. we've done some oh. genius stuff for this, but it's just getting all the art together. Which yeah, there's I'm only the, so many. I'm the hours. bottleneck on this one, I'm afraid. But well, yeah, I've just got McGann. I've just got night potatoes and and some crows left to do on that, and we're good to go. Come on. So yep. Laura, you're working with Laura Perry on this. Yes. Yep. She, well, she's the artist. No, she's she's written the tarot deck. Genius. She's written the book. She's oh, written wow. the book and the meanings 
the hopeless main meanings of of okay. all of the really suits funny. and the major arcana and oh god it is beautiful and it's so it makes sense as a tarot deck but her deep understanding of the setting just makes it wonderful and very funny and amazing she's a genius actually <laughs> So really, hopeless main seems to have taken over your lives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do all sorts. Of, we, um, we were involved in a in a local book festival a couple of years back, and it's this question of how do you do two hours on a stage on a Saturday night with a graphic novel? So I will ask, you can't even do readings from it because it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so we, we started putting together sort of music and storytelling and stuff because we had to fill this two hours slot. Yeah. But we yeah. started taking that to events and that's been quite entertaining. Yeah. And then that's grown into um, the Hopeless Main Home Companion based yes. on... The Prairie Home Companion, which is um, a thing that originated in the US. Um, so we end up with this kind of ensemble piece with all sorts of different people doing sort of readings and imagining this strange radio show from Hopeless May, complete with adverts and the um, the spider milk biscuits. Spider on. milk biscuits, giving dead persons the strength to get up and do what must be done. This is doubt, doubt, doubt. doubt. Uh, so, uh, I mean, that makes me think of like The Walking Dead because The Walking Dead started off as a comic, didn't it? That's yeah, what my, my son tells me. Yeah. Because yeah. he's got all the comics from The Walking Dead, which I had no idea was a comic before it became a series. But let's face it, that, that's how creation works, isn't it? Organically, all you need is a little seed, yep. don't you? And suddenly you've got a whole world. It's got yes. like it's saying, so Marching yeah. off and into different sort of formats and mediums of expression. Like, say, you've got the music on board now. You've got tarot deck. You're reading... Doing, doing readings at, you know, open mics and that kind of thing. It's brilliant. Yeah. You'll have a play soon. Well, We're West End. <laughs> <laughs> now that scared. you mention it, yes. Yeah. And, oh, really? And Tell us. Things in the works as well. And it's a role-playing game too, which means that there are oh. people out there in the world taking on personas and living in the world that we started great, with man. each other in That's friends, amazing. Which is just, oh. A chap named Keith healing uh, approached us because he's interested in role play games and wanted to write one and wanted to and was into hopeless main and wanted to do one in the setting so, we, so it's a book basically you yeah. don't you don't need a great deal of kit to yeah do it. yeah it's just uh, some multi-sided dice and a book a bit of paper and a book some friends okay friends snacks snacks are very important Oh, the spider milk biscuits. Were well, yeah, if, if you like. Spider milk. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, could you do any, give us a, some kind of reading or some kind of um, whatever you do. What do you do at these open mic things? What? The whirlpools will drag you down. Watch, watch the rocks, rocks boys, watch your backs. The mermaids, they will make you drown. If, if we, we aren't killed by sea monsters, monsters, waves will come and flood the boat. Watch, watch the, the rocks, rocks boys, boys, watch your backs. If you can't swim, you'd better float. If, if we, we aren't, aren't killed by sea monsters, monsters so it's heave away and it's haul away, away around the curve of the shipwreck bay. And it's heave away and it's haul away out in hopeless waters. There's um there's a few that are that are famous main songs. Professor Lawson. It's the song, and and my son does it when we're out and about, which is fantastic. He's really good. We're better when we've got him in the mix. Yeah. And there's there's one with a, a chorus of "Show me your tentacles" because we wanted <laughs> we wanted a rude hopeless main pub song, <clears throat> so she wrote it. Although a lot of our does. stories end with "So she wrote it." <laughs> Which is cool. It, it gets She's things done. Yes. Yeah, and some slightly mangled folk music. Yes. Yeah, and and one of our favourite bands in the world, um, Walter Sickert and the Army of Broken Toys. Oh God, they're amazing. They're from the US. Um, a few years ago, I just asked, you know, would you be willing to do a Hopeless Main song? And they did, and it's just absolutely. Mm. We don't do that one. No, I no, I couldn't. Um, I couldn't do Walter's voice. No. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, and there's more there's more music coming in too, actually. Yeah. Um 
but that's all that's all the ways out there that's fantastic i'm sorry I <laughs> so i've got a question can i ask a question yeah, yeah. Um, does steampunk druidry have anything to do with Hopeless Maine? Have the two kind of interlinked or are, are they two separate things? Um, well, I, I'm the common factor there. Um, <laughs> I started down the whole steampunk druid thing partly as a joke because we were at Professor Elemental Gig and he said, I want to be in charge of a cult. I want to be Lord Summer Isle. And I said, bear with me. We can do this. He's probably completely forgotten this since. Um, and the Secret Order of Steampunk Druids was born of that moment and has an unknown membership and people do whatever they do with it. Um, so, I mean, the steampunk is is pretty much an integral part of the Hopeless yeah. Project um, because of the Victoriana and the magic and the monsters. It's got and the community. Things. And the community. And we it, these are the people we make it for, first yeah. and foremost. But um, I, mean, I think with us, it's the animism. Yeah. Because one of the key things with the Hopeless setting is that so many things have eyes and look back and, and are clearly capable of opinion and intent. And the, you never the whole quite landscape know. is looking back. Yes, actually. frequently. So yes. there's that sense of of it's very sort of inspirited in all the senses. Yeah. So that's probably where the, the sort of the biggest area of overlap in that project is. But we've got we've got a lot of folklore as well. And yeah. we've, we've sort of dug in with that and the, the folklore images and what people do with traditions and that sort of thing. So, you know, like yeah. witchcraft and, and Mary Lloyds and we like our Mary Lloyds. Yeah. And um, yeah, that kind of thing. How are you getting this out there, you two? How are you marketing it? Oh. Well, it's it's a multi-pronged thing. Um, social media is, of course, the the uh, the thing that we can afford. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Organically, uh, might be the we won't be answer to that one then. <laughs> but the thing the thing that's happened is through social media, we have developed a lot of relationships, and they're real relationships. It's not a um, you know oh these are fans thing. These are, these are our friends. Um, and so what happens quite naturally at that point is when you put it out there, then they will talk to each other and they'll talk to other people. And we get evangelists as well. We, we do. Get. We get evangelists. It's exciting. We also, we do, we do events when we can, um, through the year, uh, and that process of just going out and meeting people and waving the stuff at them invariably yeah. sort of uh, brings us new audiences and that's always quite good fun and our, our publisher on the uh, on the graphic novel side does a lot of events as yeah. well I mean he does all the MCM events and things like that it's a very small publishing house but he's really keen and we like him yeah. and it's good so and who it's, is that anyway uh, Sloth Comics um, Sloth Comics Sloth yes based in Edinburgh and um, yeah it's a, it's a nice little outfit Mm. There's um, some other steampunkish stuff in there, and and comedy goblin deaths and French comics in translation and stuff. It's a nice little house. Yeah. It's Penny black feather. Penny black feather. We like it. Good. So you're not self-publishing then. This is not going... not with the comics. No. no. Um, okay. We are with the prose books because it's just less faff to be yeah. honest, and we wanted to crack on with it. But um, yeah, Nick's got some good distribution stuff set up, and as I said, he does a lot of events, so it's nice to be part of something rather than yeah um, having to do it all ourselves. Yeah, the Terror Deck will probably be self-published. Yeah, it's just, again, it's more practical that way. Yeah, and we've yeah as, aside from Sloth, I mean, our our some of our publishing experiences have been not entirely positive, and there's also you know publishers move at the speed of publishers. Um, which yeah. is is very slow, uh, for the most part. Um, yeah, and no. We're impatient, and it's, you know, you do a drawing, right? And then it's like four years before the book comes out, and then you oh. can show people that drawing that you did four years ago and say, "Isn't this great?" When in your head you're going, "Oh my God, don't look at that too closely." <laughs> Sloth is is best of both worlds there because um, they're keen on what we're doing. And we've worked out a schedule with him so that he'll publish a graphic novel a year um, pretty much on whatever schedule works for us. Yeah, it's a bit of wriggle room, but there's there's a matter of months between us getting it finished and handed in and a book happening, which, yeah. is, which is workable. It's not that kind of, and three years later, we're still having a conversation about it. Yeah, 
this because you obviously work together and it sounds like the Hopeless Main project is is quite organic as it's sort of been growing in different ways. But I wanted to ask you about your inspiration. Um, so um, I did I did read a bit on your website, Nimway, about um, kind of um, you coming into Druidry and and stuff. And and I so I wanted to ask whether whether that part of your life influences what you do or whether just being that is what influences what you do. Well, I think there's there's sort of a bit of a both going on there, depending you know what day of the week is it. Um, there is no way of of taking the paganism out of what I do. It's 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 hardwired and it shows up in all kinds of ways. Um, some of it is deliberate, definitely. Um, I think probably less so with with Hopeless Main than with some of the stuff that I've written. I mean, there's a there's a novel on Bandcamp called Fast Food at the Centre of the World, which is another one where Tom came up with the characters and the original setting and then just went, and something happens. And I took it and ran away. Um, and that's absolutely deliberately loaded with Bard Path stuff and bits of poetry and politics and all the mm. all the druid things. So, yeah, sometimes it's it's a very full on and deliberate thing. And sometimes it's just sort of part of the flavour, I think. Yeah. And we're working more of the... Um more of the uh, ecological make do and men mm. for use um, into the art and the in the hopeless main in progress now to show that these people are living on an island you know I don't know if you'll see any parallels here um, <laughs> with limited resources mm -hmm. um, they're cut off from the rest of the world uh, so they can't just use things and throw them away they have to take everything and turn it into something else and reuse it and and so on and so forth and their greatest resource is is in fact each other. Um, are they all very good at that? No, no, some of them are not very good at that. Some of, some of them see each other as a resource in terms of something to drink, but <laughs> that's something else. Yeah, and for myself, I, I grew up in Maine to answer the, the paganism and how it influences the work thing. And I first became aware of a sense of spirit of place, um, uh, of a very liminal, uh, between place um, that the landscape was inhabited both in a large sense and in sometimes in very particular senses. Um, and that hit me when I was quite young. I was probably nine or ten years old. And I can still remember, you know, very particular experiences of that walking in the woods and just having this sense of of not being alone there. Um, and that has informed Hopeless Maine and everything that I have done since then. That's that's the well primarily that I draw from. I, I'm interested in the Kickstarter thing that you do, because I'm thinking about doing a Kickstarter for my first three books in my Witchlit series um, for, for creating the audio. <laughs> Um, because it's it's a good way of doing it if you haven't got money. Yes. yes. Um, obviously, you need an audience. So how does that work, both of you? How how do you, how... we wouldn't have done it? It was it was the third person in our team, um, Keith, who's also written a hopeless main novella, said, "I can figure out the logistics and make this go." So he's done all the the costings up and the figuring out how to do the print runs and the things that frankly we would balk at because yeah. they're a bit numbery and a bit paperworky and he said I can do it and he yeah. was right. And he's very good at um, it. So you need somebody or to be somebody who's got that kind of mind and I feel logical not it yes yeah and and, and maths. willing to just sort of crunch numbers and if then sort of you know if we if we get 500 what can we do and what's the minimum spend and all the things and um yeah he's he's done all the putting together which is yeah. heroic and fabulous and made it an awful lot easier for us yeah. um the other key thing to have is not just 
not just a fan base, but a team of people who will, who will yeah. during the month work the Kickstarter. We had a lot of people who either like us or owe us favours or heady combinations thereof yeah. who were willing to do us shout outs who have people that we wouldn't otherwise get to. And I think that was absolutely essential. Yeah. Where I've seen people kickstarting where they don't have much of a support team, um, it's really hard to get them yeah. moving. And the ones that work seem to have yeah. have networks and, and friends and and favor systems and other good things and you want to find out before you hit the go button on your kickstarter uh which people and how many uh will be willing to signal boost for you um so if you're trying to figure that out while the campaign is already in progress you'll be screaming all the time you're typing mm. i didn't i didn't know that we had that many people and i don't know that before we started it we had that many people because it grew because because people were signal mm, boosting, but it's it's shocking amounts of support just came in very mm. quickly. That's fantastic, isn't it? it, it yeah. So, yeah. can you clarify actually what is Kickstarter? How do you? Is it people giving you money? What what is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, with the, well, that's well simple, sort right? of. It's it's people giving you some money, and it's people giving Kickstarter some money. Um, oh. And there's other platforms. There's um, Indiegogo. Indiegogo. I hear good things about Indiegogo. Things. Um, but the premise of it is it's a lot like a subscription publishing model, yeah. like that kind of Victorian approach where you go around to all the people with money and go, would you like to contribute to making this book yeah. happen? Um, yeah. it, you can kind of think of it about as selling copies ahead of time, but people yeah. can put all kinds of rewards in. So, and um, that's why I was doing the obituaries because I thought, well, there might be a few crazy people who'd like an obituary. <laughs> yes, only a hundred of them, yes. Only a hundred of them. And a few who complained about having missed it, but never mind. Um, they get a mask, right? So, yeah, the kinds of rewards <laughs> that you can put in. And um, and whether whether people are attracted to that, um, friends of ours who do the Matlock the Hair books, um, mm. Phil and Jackie do a lot of kickstarting, and they make kind of adorable little creatures and art and bookmarks, and you can probably Hang get on a the drupple. I can get the drupple. Um, and they do this thing oh, wow. whereby once they get into stretch goals, everybody gets more nice stuff, which is adorable. This is the drupple. This is one of their creations. But yeah, I mean, you can't resist things like that. I think <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> It's got, it's got dust. dust the <laughs> We've got a dusty dripple. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but yeah, so it's it can be a hell of a lot of work to get to get the money raised. And like, and we went slightly over four k with this, which doesn't mean we now have four thousand pounds. It means we have enough money to produce the things that we said we'd produce. We yeah. still won't make any money out of it, but you know, it gets things moving, and hopefully, yeah, longer it's cleaner now. A clean dripple is an important yes. thing. But yeah, it will end up with print copies of books that we can sell. So the theory is that eventually it becomes possible for us to make money. But um, yeah, it's uh, but it's a very flexible system, which is part of what I like about it. It's not like there's only one way to do it. It depends on what you're making and what your fan base is like yeah. and and what you want to do and, and what you had lying around that you desperately like to get rid of and you know, happy combinations of that. So it's it's... Yeah, there's no two Kickstarters the same, which no. is part of what makes it good, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. It's interesting. And also, Nimway, you've got a... You're on Patreon, aren't you? I am, mm -hmm. yep. So tell me about that. Tell us about that. Okay. Because um, um, I've been thinking about maybe doing one of those, you know... Yeah, that's a, it's a really interesting platform. I've been doing it for a couple of years and it was it was set up with an eye to people who give away a lot of stuff. So that like YouTubers and bloggers particularly, um, but you, you can't make any money out of YouTube or blogging. So if people like what you do and they want to keep you doing it, um, it's like putting a busking hat out almost and, and people chuck money at you and then it becomes more viable to do the things. So um it can work really very well for people and again it's about how sort of working out the bits of what you do that other people might like a bit of so i keep messing about with it i haven't sort of settled on a formula but it's amazing actually how generous people will be when they like what you do and if they want to make sure that you keep doing it and they'll pile in and sort of you know go yes i'd like a short story every month have some money um and again it's it's a very mixed bag i've i've looked at uh, an assortment of people doing it from massively successful ones like Professor Elemental and he's using his to just underwrite anything he wants to do as far as I can tell so if he wants to print a book now he's got the Patreon resources to be able to do that which is fantastic 
Um, but I've also seen people start them and, and not get any followers at all. Um, and it's things like if, if, and I won't name any names, not at this point. Um, if you tell people that you're a massively successful best-selling novel, um, writer of some sort and you put up, you know, the screenshots of your Amazon number one spot and then you go, oh, but, you know, I kind of need money to write my next book. These are the people who do not get support on Patreon because it's like if I'm if I'm seeing all this, how successful you are, why would I also be giving you money to do the things? So it's yeah. an act about kind of how you're talking about your work, what it is that you do, why people want to give you money. It's, um, yeah, there's no two Patreons the same, but it's it's um, it's very doable. And for the people it works for, I think it's, it's yeah. been really good for me. And it's yeah. kept me writing where I might have entirely given up on the fiction a couple of years ago. I was really, I was very demoralised and it was kind of a last desperate, can I make something work short? And the answer was yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just writing something for people every month has sort of kept me in there which has been nice yeah so I, it's worth it it's definitely worth the thought i think one of the great things about these kinds of platforms is is just having that space to go you know what what do i want to do what people might you know what is it that i might actually like to do every week that somebody else might yeah. be interested in having a look at and then sort of building from there so yeah it's uh it's very flexible one of the ways in which you can run Patreon is not on the basis of creating extra content, but on the basis of going, particularly, I put up these YouTube videos. If you want to help me do this, yeah. you know, chuck some money in. And you can do it rather than on a like a monthly basis, on a video basis, and people will cap how much they'll give you in a month in case you get carried away. <laughs> but but if people are already, you know, they're taking an interest in this in this channel. And you're already putting out work that people are interested in, just simply putting up a Patreon that goes, This is my stuff. I'll put the videos on here as well so you can see them a bit more easily. But basically, if you like my videos, chuck us a couple of quid, it makes a lot of odds. That can that it doesn't have to be any more complicated, and that's part of the beauty of it. That if you're putting stuff out there for free, people can just chuck money at you, which is a really good premise, I think. You know, let and people support what they love, and it's cool. Mm. It's That's just really about cool. having a platform I, to really show what you're already doing, Wendy, yeah, couldn't it? it? Because yeah. you don't, it doesn't mean it's going to be any more work. I mean, yes, obviously, you're going to have to go away. You're going to have to look at Patreon and and study, you know, how to get on it and blah, blah, blah. Look at Nimway's page and, and get an idea of how it was. Because all these platforms require time. Thank you. There is a learning curve for every platform. Yeah. But if you know that actually it's a way of becoming more visible and monetizing what you're doing, yeah. you're sharing yourself, your work, your creativity in a way which won't require that much more work. So, you know, maybe that would help you. Stop worrying. Yeah. <laughs> we have no, it's a great idea. I, th I think it's a really good idea, and um, and what and I think your I think I think um what Nimway said about doing um uh, doing the things that you you want to do, doing the things that you enjoy doing, and and having another platform to share that is the way forward. Yeah. Where are you going from here, you two? What are your what are your ideas? What where where do you see this journey going? And how can people link up with you online? Um, I'm the easier one to Google. There are a few too many Tom Brains out there. Um, I'm very easy. <laughs> well, I don't why. So that's um, yeah. Stick me in the search engine and we turn up. Hopeless Maine is pretty easy to Google yep. as well. Um, we've got two more graphic novels to do in the Hopeless Main story arc. It was always, um, I wrote a complete story arc at the, at the beginning, so we've always known what we were working to. At that point, um, we will be opening the island up more to other people. We'll see how that plays out. Um, and we are not going to do any big graphic novels after that point because it is so labour intensive. It's, it's six months of the year full time for Tom to get one down and they don't pay frankly on the scale that is like six months of your year working full-time so we want to change that and we're moving towards 
um, the light novel form, which is a mix of illustration and prose and comics pages and, and is much more flexible and much less defined and, and people don't immediately think superheroes and other yeah. useful things. So creatively, that's definitely where we're going yeah. next. And there's a lot of things we're just waiting to see what happens that are just sort of floating about in the ether going, oh, we could be things, but yes. they haven't quite, they haven't settled some, yet. Some of them are quite large, these mm. things that are floating in the ether. They're, they're big things. I think we can say that in, what, a couple of weeks' time, yeah. um, little bits of Hopeless Maine are going to be at some kind of um, industry yes. fair event in Tokyo because we have wow. a map around who, who wanted to do that. And we wait to see what else he wants to do with great interest. But yeah. but that's all very exciting. And, yes. could, and there's a lot of people are going, we'd really like to do a thing. If only we could figure out how to fund it. So yeah. if anyone figures out how to fund some of these things. Yeah. There's, there's, a, there's a pipe dream for a, um, the, the graphic novels start with a, a prelude to the story called The Blind <laughs> Fisherman. And a couple of winters ago, we ended up watching a lot of black and white films uh, and silent films. And we saw Metropolis and everything else. And then we realized that the storytelling in the black and white films is in many ways similar to comics, to sequential art. And then thought about the blind fish and, oh my God, how amazing would it be to have a black and white film, silent film of the blind women? <laughs> And then it's like, as soon as I put that up, just this is how things happen a lot. I put something up on Facebook. It's just like, here's a wild idea. Then people come to go, you know what? I happen to have an actual period wind camera um, oh, to do glass wow. photography at steampunk events. So it could be an actual period camera. And they've already done videos with this. Mm. It can be done. Um, and we know people who do soundtracks. And yeah. They're all kind of yeah. voiced. Walter has already said he would do the soundtrack of Walter Sickett, The Armor of Broken Toys, which would be the soundtrack. And he's already scored silent films at live performances in Boston. So, again, it's just it's waiting for, for everything. A magic to, thing. It's waiting a magic for a magic thing. thing but, right. you know. So if anyone's listening, you know, <laughs> you're thinking, oh, you know what I really wanted to do this weekend was fun... <laughs> And white film of the blind fisherman you know just just uh, just get in touch with us and we'll, we'll probably say yeah <laughs> wow well i think wendy we need to get our cauldron out don't you <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> well, doing, doing this, this in somehow in some way has helped you know to um get it out there because that's what it's all about isn't it it's yeah. about sowing seeds it's about being visible about letting people know and like as you say tom you just voice your idea and yeah. say oh i have this wild idea um you don't know how that's going to materialize or manifest but somebody else catches that idea yeah. and says well actually yeah. <laughs> you two are clearly a partnership on many levels um do you get on all right all the time <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we absolutely do. Um, we spent a couple of years living on an arrowboat um, and working and living in a space that was sort of less than six foot square for the greater part. And we survived that and didn't kill each other. So clearly it's yeah. everything else in relation to that just seems pretty straightforward. Yeah. And about the worst it gets is sometimes somebody will be upset about something and then we have to figure out how to fix that. And that's yeah. pretty much, yeah. yeah, that's all we get in terms yeah. of difficult stuff. Something has gone wrong. Who oh, no. knows? Yes. Sort of yeah. Way. Yeah. And then the priority is is make yeah. sure that it it gets better. Yeah. 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 We get along very well. Amazing. <laughs> That's well, wonderful work. Ethic. Lovely. So. Oh. Works. <laughs> Dear me. We still our beating hearts. Honestly, I think it's wonderful. I think you're a true sort of example, creative example to everybody. Don't you think, Wendy? No pressure. <laughs> Don't you think, Wendy? Oh, oh de definitely. I, there's no way that I could work with my partner. He drives oh. me insane. He's, yeah. he's, he's creative in a very different way. He's a musician, so he has music playing in his head all the time. 
Um, the fact he has to go to work and lay wood floors and sand floors and things just is just such a pain to him. But then again, it is the kind of job that it's OK if the music carries on playing. Um, but the thought of actually trying to work together, I mean, he it, the only times that we ever kind of get together is if he drums and I dance. That's OK. That works. Um, but um, but on any other level, no, no, I'm 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 a solitary little bunny and I like working on my own. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I was very solitary in terms of how I like to live and work and I'd need hours and hours of alone time in a day. And then Tom came and like, so no, I can just carry on like I was doing it by myself. Only, only there he is. And it's because I'm boring. <laughs> <You're not>. <laughs> <laughs> you are <quiet. laughs> Well, I think you're far from that, Tom. Blimey. You're just a pair of geniuses, both of you. And when's the tarot deck coming out? Yeah. Any any idea? What an interesting question. <laughs> That's what I say when I don't know the answer. Okay. Um, oh. Soon, as soon as possible. I, the, the remaining, there's not that much remaining work. And we have just um, given ourselves a little bit more breathing room. In terms of it's, it's as she said, it's the graphic novel. It takes six months of like a page a day, and that's mm. you know that can be a ten-hour day. Um, uh, yeah. If you yeah, if you factor in the the drawing and then the over penciling and then the scanning and everything else, um, so as soon as possible. Okay, <laughs> but it's, it's going to be great. It's, oh, it is. It's going to be. It's going to be worth the it's going to be absolutely me being a cardaholic. I'm, you know, <laughs> first in the queue for my my deck, please. Right. And I will. Do it. Um, what else was I going to say? So, has has Hopeless Main got a website that people can go yeah, to? Yeah, it's, it's hopelessmain.com. Oh, brilliant! Shockingly. Okay. Well, I know that I'm going to head over there straight away. We switch off, <laughs> and um, to Stop. all our audience, all our witch lit um, viewers, listeners. Um, Go and have a look. Look at what Tom and Nimue create together because it is clearly magical. Clearly magical. magical. And it's it's growing. (laughs) It's organically getting out to the masses. And Tokyo, here you come. Yeah. Okay, so we'll finish everybody. And thank you very much Mm -hmm. to Tom and Nimue for joining us on our Witchlit show. (laughs) <laughs> bye-bye, Mrs. Piggy Binkle. <laughs> <laughs> and bye-bye, you two, and take good care of yourselves. And good luck with all your magical creations. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, good luck, and see you again on the uh, on the podcast next year. Yeah, we look forward to it. Okay, bye. round and round, lady crawling me off. We are bound, mix it up together, stir the madness round and round. Lady Crow, lend me your feather, by the magic we are bound. We are bound, by the magic.